What is going down YouTube town? It's Captain Retro and today I've got a different type of video for you. A couple weeks ago, Chris Miller challenged me and a couple other YouTubers to a top five must-have NES games that do not include Mario games or Zelda games or any of our other favorite series. So we had to pick five other games that we consider must-haves that you may or may not be aware of, and my five, you're probably going to be aware of most of them. So I decided, fuck yeah, I'll take that challenge, buddy. It's on. You want some of this? You want some of the Dukes? I put the Dukes up. And I'll knock his ass out. Here come my five must-have NES titles. Number five is River City Ransom. River City Ransom, originally released as Downtown Niketsu Monogatari, or Downtown Hot-Blooded Story, or Street Gangs in PAL regions, is an open-world action role-playing beat-em-up video game. It's the third game in Technos' Kunio Kun series, preceded by Renegade and Super Dodgeball. The game is non-linear, allowing players to explore an open world in a sandbox manner. The fighting style is very similar to Double Dragon, in that the player can move freely around the screen while pressing buttons to jump, kick, punch, and, you know, use objects such as brass knuckles, steel pipes, and trash cans. You can also buy food. It's kind of got role-playing game elements to it. I mean, it really does have a, a, a leveling system and an RPG element to it. Uh, it's actually one of the first sandbox games I ever played, and I fell in love with it immediately, and I've been looking for a while to complete it, and I was able to do so at Retropalooza uh, 4. I was able to put together a complete copy of River City Ransom for myself, so that's awesome. Do yourself a favor and check out River City Ransom. Number four is Crystalis, or Crystallize, or Crystallis, or whatever the fuck. Everybody has different ways of pronouncing everything, and it doesn't really bother me which way you choose. Crystallis, originally released in Japan as God Slayer, Haruka Tinko no Sonata. God Slayer, Sonata of the Faraway Sky, is a 1990 action RPG action adventure game produced by SNK. It is now considered a cult classic. Uh, it wasn't really when it first came out. I don't think it was very popular when it was first released. It gives Zelda a good run for its money, and since I'm not allowed to have a Zelda game in this thing, this one's the one I choose. In a post-apocalyptic world, 100 years after a global thermonuclear war has reverted civilization to a primitive medieval existence populated with fierce, mutated creatures, science and advanced technology have been abandoned, but magic remains. The protagonist awakens with no memory, but guided by four wise sages, gradually learns that the world is sinking into turmoil due to the Dragonia Empire's destructive influence. Entrusted with the Sword of Wind, he seeks to aid Messia, another survivor from his time, and to combine the four elemental swords of wind, fire, water, and thunder, how, do, how thunder got in there, I don't know, it should be earth, into the legendary sword, Crystallis. Together they must defeat Dragon before he uses the tower to achieve his evil ambitions. Totally fun game, very Zelda-esque, in some ways better than Zelda. You know, it came out later, it, it, it took a lot of influence from Zelda, so it's, you know, it's a clone game. But really worth your time and very cheap, you know, you can pick it up for about 20 bucks, I think. Uh, probably complete in box for 25 to 30 bucks. I, I don't know exactly where it's running right now. Number three is Nightshade. Nightshade. Nightshade Part 1, The Claws of Sutek is an action-adventure game, point-and-click, actually, released by Beam Software in 92, and it was published by Ultra Games. The game was meant to be the first part in a series, but no sequels were ever made. However, it served as the basis for Beam Software's 1993 game, Shadowrun. The game takes place in a fictional urban city called Metro City. As the story unfolds, the city's local superhero named Vortex is outnumbered by gangs and killed. With the city's protector murdered, crime grows rapidly. Soon enough, the city's crime lords start fighting over control of the city until a villain named Sutek takes control, combining all the gangs into one. With the city completely overrun by Sutek and the other crime lords, Rat King, Goliath, Lord Muck, and Ninja Mistress, it is soon devoured in crime. A vigilante named Mark, alias Nightshade, decides to step up and take the law into his own hands, vowing to rid Metro City of crime. It's a point-and-click comedy adventure, really. Uh, it's like a noir uh, detective thriller comedy game, and they're constantly calling Nightshade different names, Lampshade, uh, no one ever seems to be really scared of him. You grow your popularity throughout the game. It's really fun. Uh, when you die, you have to fight your way out of these uh, death trap type situations that the bad guys put you in. And if you can defeat it, you can get to go again. If not, you gotta start over. It's it's a different kind of game, and I didn't know about it until just recently, actually, and I've fallen in love with it. So uh, I, I highly recommend, well, River City Ransom is still in my lap. I highly recommend Nightshade. Number two is Metroid. And if you don't know about Metroid, 
you shouldn't even be on any channel ever watching anything about retro Nintendo video games if you're not aware of what Metroid is and how significant it is. I can't believe this was actually allowed to be part of the five. Uh, you know, no Mario, no Zelda, no other favorite franchise. Well, my other favorite franchise is Mega Man, so that's cool. Metroid, boom, eat that. The number one game on my list, and actually the next best series past Mario, Zelda, Mega Man, is Castlevania. But I'm going to go with Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. This is the best Castlevania game in my eyes on the Nintendo. Um, the original Castlevania is amazing too, and don't hate on Simon's Quest. I like Part 2 as well, but this is the best uh, Castlevania game on the Nintendo. And thoroughly worth your time again something i don't need to explain to people about castlevania it's dracula and you're hunting dracula that's all you need to know uh, go at it have fun side-scrolling platformer of doom the last two i didn't feel like we really needed to go into too much detail about come on you should know what they are right so that's going to do it for my top five must-have NES games that are not Mario, Zelda, or my other favorite series, Mega Man. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. I'm going to shout out two guys to uh, do this challenge, too. I don't know if they're going to see this video or even give a fuck, but here we go. Shadow the Oblivious. Shadow, you're crazy ass. I'm going to tag you up and see what you think the top five must-have games are for your NES. And then number two would be Yese Asha. Yese. Let's see what you got, bro. What are your top five? Let me see it. Thanks again, guys. Uh, please keep watching the Captain. Keep it retro. Keep watching Captain Retro! Where you wanna go?